How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. Aged beer time. No idea how old, though. In the form of, this is a brewery Smith's J. It's their uh, Calva Reserva, which is their Kirst, uh, which is like a winter, their version of a winter warmer, um, aged in Calvados casks. How about that? Um, I've had this beer before. I had this beer before. <sighs> Four years ago was the last time I had this beer. Um, right around the time when I actually reviewed, I reviewed the base of this about four years ago. And I remember right about the same time, my buddy Wade um, brought this by and we drank it. I wasn't a fan, actually. It didn't blow me away or anything like that. But I saw it sit on the shelf and I was like, man, it kind of still looks, it's like, you might be able to see it. It looks like the, the, the label's like, bubble jet printer, it's all fucked up, it's like not even a nice label, and there's like glue sticking out uh, in certain places and shit like that, like it's really haphazardly done, which is beautifully Belgian, um, and uh, yeah, kind of wanted to revisit it, uh, what does it say on here, it's 11% alcohol by volume, it's a Smith's J, I'm probably butchering that, it's a T apostrophe, uh, Smith's M, S M I S J E. so I'm going to say Smith's J, I'm probably pronouncing this shit-tastic of it. Anyway, uh, it's all brewed with, uh, ale brewed with coriander, okay, and there you go, and aged in Calvados casks. Brewed and bottled by Smith J. Uh, Ordender, uh, Belgium, uh, imported by B United, which isn't too far away from here, up there in Connecticut, might be that, you know, label-wise, it, like I said, it's ghetto as fuck. Looks like bubble jet, like I can just pull it off and just like, eh, just shitty label, red cap, and on the cap it just says Calva BB, Bourbon barrel? That doesn't make sense because Calvados Cusk is not a bourbon barrel. And uh, yeah, let's crack into it. So I dig the label. It's ghetto as hell. Calvados Cask, more times than not, it's apple brandy barrel. I know they can be deemed different, but more times than not, if I've ever had a beer uh, that was in a Calvados Cask. Ooh, look at that carbonation. Okay. I'm digging that. You know, I'm, I'm assuming this is old. I don't think there's any way. It, yeah, it's definitely old. You're probably not going to be able, I don't know if you can, if I had a white piece of paper to kind of fold up, there's a big Merc ring kind of floating on there, so this beer has definitely a bunch of time on it, but it's nice to see it has a nice kind of soft carbonation to it, and uh, yeah, she looks pretty nice, she looks like a rich kind of iced tea kind of in color, so, yeah, just off white head, looks a part of like, they call it their winter, warm ooh, vibrant, um, their winter warmer, so it's kind of like a Belgian double dark with spices. Belgian double with, like, spices, if I remember correctly. is kind of what it's like. Let's get a nose. Okay. That smells nice. I'm getting this green apple vibe from it. Um, nothing too crazy. Just soft green apple. Um, that could be your kind of uh, Abbey, apple brand of brandy barrels that work there. I am getting a soft, like, spiciness. Kind of that coriander. A little bit of kind of earthy spiciness from it. Not necessarily like a bittering hop kind of earthy spiciness. Just look like a soft, almost like like jacked up Belgian season kind of spiciness. And there's just a bunch of sweetness in there. It is oxidized. There is a bit of kind of papery old bookiness to it. But she smells pretty damn good. Especially for someone that kind of digs on older beer. Let's dive in. Cheers. Ooh. Wow. That's vibrant. Yeah, that coriander is, like, insane in this. Like, really, really powerful. Yeah, big, huge punch of coriander. Comes off almost drying, kind of like the cinnamon challenge in your mouth, but you're like, oof. Big pop of coriander. That apple brandy definitely comes through. That apple brandy barrel. It's got this rich, nice sweetness to it. Definitely leaning in that kind of green apple skinny territory. There's a nice kind of rich sweetness throughout the beer, so it definitely comes off as kind of a Belgian double slash darkish kind of vibe. And there's a hefty dryness to it. I believe that's coming from the barrel itself in combination with that kind of coriander. But yeah, it's nice. I like it. I dig it. I think it's tasty. Just a little bit too heavy-handed on the coriander for me. Um, yeah. It ends up coming off like, like, like I said, like kind of like that cinnamon challenge. I've never done the cinnamon challenge. I'm not dumb enough to do the cinnamon challenge. Cinnamon challenge. Let me rephrase it. I'm totally dumb enough to do cinnamon challenge. I just never have 
been uh, put in the uh, position to be dumb enough to do the cinnamon challenge. But I love me cinnamon. I love it. And I put cinnamon, I eat the same breakfast every morning, which is one solitary bowl of oatmeal. And I put um, cinnamon in it. And every now and then, I don't mix it up, and I, you know, go to kind of spoon some cinnamon, and I get a big waft of cinnamon in my mouth, and it, it gives you that, um, that dry cough, that little, <clears throat> like you just had that powder kind of thing going on. It has that going for it, but in more of a coriander kind of way. But then when you throw on top of that the dryness of the of the wood tannins from the barrel itself, it comes off very very dry. It makes me want to sneeze actually. She's nice. I like it. it. It it works for what it wants to do. I just wish it was a little bit more cohesive, a little bit more just uh older. I know it's old. This I mean this Merc ring on here is pretty hefty stuff. So it's definitely been sitting around at least for a couple of years. But I just it, listen. And this is the thing with Belgian beers like these. They can vary from beer to beer. So it's not <sighs> I remember not liking it, but I remember not like... How do I put this? I remember not being blown away by it, but I don't remember this. And this, I would have remembered as being good. If that makes any sense. That coriander be damned. It's a fun beer. I think it's a cool take. I think it adds a little twist to it. I just think another four or five years might temper a little bit those spices. Um, kind of push everything down and just make it more of a kind of harmonic kind of more sultry kind of beer. But she's tasty. Nice. Just a little bit too heavy on a coriander. Beer's nice. Definitely comes off winter warmer-ish and then added on top of that with a really nice representation of the Apple Brandy Calvados cask. I dig it. Uh, so yeah, is it one of the better Belgian beers I've had as of late? Just on the end. It's not in, not out. It's on that edge. This is a coriander. I like it though and you don't want to confuse me liking it with being fantastic beer. I don't know how to make that make any more sense than what my brain is making me think right now. But I dig it, but not enough to kind of throw it in with uh, some of the best that I've had. Value availability, that was like six and change, six dollars and change. And a first single, that's a Belgian barrel-aged beer that I think that's not too uh, too creptastic. And leave you with, if you like what we like this, if you like coriander. And you like apple brandy barrels, because I think if that coriander was dialed back, this would be an absolute home run. But, um, Fun, tasty, Belgian through and through. It's a little bit too much coriander. So there you go. Another review in the books down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully you're enjoying these. Smith J, as I butcher that one last time. And uh, hope to see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>